All right, welcome back. So as promised, we're going to do another one of these problems. This one's just a little bit more complicated. And so here's what we're given. Uh, we have a swinging target and we have a dart. So the dart is 25 grams, target is 730 grams. Here's what happens. The dart is thrown, hits the target, and then the dart and the target together swing up, changing this, in, this kinetic energy. So we have a kinetic energy here. So this is a kinetic energy initial here of the dart, right? And then that's going to hit this and transfer into a kinetic energy final. We'd have to assume that this is going to be inelastic, right? Because as this hits this, um, these are definitely not going to move um, at the same speed. But anyways, we will have a kinetic energy final here, right? Which um, we can transfer back maybe to figure out this. Um, but this kinetic energy final here is moving into um, potential energy, and there's no change, uh, there's no collision here. This is just a system going from a lower position and having kinetic energy that pushes it up, and then gravity, of course, will bring it down. And so we know from the, um, the diagram here that it goes up 12 centimeters. So we have a height. So we have this idea of um, this kinetic energy is going to cause a change in potential energy. All right, so what's the question? So why don't we say, I want to know what the initial velocity of this first dart was before it hit the board and before the board swung up 12 centimeters. Okay, so here's what we know. We have a height, we have the masses of each, and that's all. So can we figure this out? We're going to have to start over here at the potential energy and work our way all the way backwards because we know that whatever height this went up to came from the kinetic energy of this. And the kinetic energy of this came from the kinetic energy of this. So we have little bits and pieces of all these different things. Um, but we're going to have to start here at the final one. You could start in other places as well, but... Um, to simplify everything and to save time, we'll start here and move backwards. So what is potential energy? So potential energy is mass times gravity times height, and we have all that. So we know the mass of these two things together is going to be 0 0.025 kilograms plus 0 0.730 kilograms. I had to convert these grams into kilograms. So that's going to give me 0.755 kilograms, right? And we know that the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know that the height here is 12 centimeters, which we convert to meters, so we get 0.12 meters. And we know that that is going to equal whatever kinetic energy went in to make it go up that height. Okay. Um, and we don't have much happening here for energy going any other places, really. So our assumption is that this is a conservative. And most of the time, if you have kinetic energy that causes things to go up and back down, you have this fairly uh, uniform conservation of kinetic into potential and back down. Collisions are harder because then you have um, two things colliding becoming one, anything that changes shape or goes from a smaller mass to a larger mass is going to lose kinetic energy. But we have no change in mass. We just have energy shifting from kinetic to potential. So here would be our idea. We would say, okay, so we have one-half mass times velocity squared is going to be our, our kinetic energy. So what is that? So our mass is the same as 7.55 kilograms, right? Our velocity, we don't know what that is, so velocity squared divided by 2. So it's one-half mass velocity squared. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together, and I'm going to go ahead and then multiply them by 2, and then I'm going to divide them by 7.55, and then I'm going to take the square root of all of that. So that's just simple algebra to figure out what this velocity is. So I find out that this velocity here is 1.53 meters per second. Okay, so that's the velocity of this. So now I've got th this velocity right here, which was a part of this initial kinetic energy, right? Or I mean, in this case, actually, final. So, so this thing is going to move at 1.53 meters per second. So then can I figure out the initial um, velocity of this? Probably not from energies, because this is going to be a kinetic energy um, conversion and it's probably going to be inelastic. I mean, you know, you got a very small thing hitting a big thing. Yeah, so 
the idea here would be that uh, going the route of, of kinetic energy isn't going to be your best conservation, but momentum is. We know that momentum initial equals momentum final, and it's almost always perfectly conserved. So what is that? So my momentum initial is going to be a mass times velocity initial, uh, which is going to be a 0 0.025 kilograms, right? times an initial velocity, and that's what I want to know. And I know that my resulting mass is going to be 0.755 kilograms, because that's where it hits right here. And I know that my resulting momentum is 1.53 meters per second. Sorry, I ran out of space there. You can see that's a 1.53. Maybe you can't. I'll go ahead and rewrite it. So 1.53. All right, so multiply these together and divide by that, and I find my velocity initial is going to equal 46 meters per second. So there we go. Um, so this is a little bit more complex one as we analyzed um, one system becoming another system through a collision causing a kinetic energy, which then causes a potential energy. So we worked our way backwards um, from the potential energy all the way back to the initial velocity. So there you go. That's a little bit more complex one, and it sort of integrates all of the ideas found in um, your chapter here on conservation of kinetic energy.